I nursed forever. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Burger drama and health problems. It's what's on the menu. Today, we're serving up Bob's Burgers number three. Let's dive right in. Well, doesn't it just smell lovely in here? <laughs> yep, yep. Another false alarm, I guess. No poop for you. <laughs> it's like this, no soup for you. No soup for you. She had some sort of poop signal, but no poop came out. That's okay. A normal person should be pooping at least once a day. Maybe it's okay to go every other day. You know, I go one week, I go one month, and my doctor says it's okay. Is it really? So you're not upset because you haven't pooped in four days and you're about to go on an overnight trip where your only option will be a public toilet? <laughs> She seems great. Oh, hello, entire family. Oh my gosh, it's a whole family. There's so many different reasons why you might not be pooping. As the poop sits in your colon, the colon is drawing out water, making it more firm and more dense. There's a thing where you get such a large ball of poop, it can calcify it. It's called a fecal loma. I'm fine. I was worried about having to poop on the trip, but now I can't poop at all, and that's perfect. I'll go on the overnight, come back, and everything will work itself out here. It might be the size of me, but that's okay. <laughs> well, respect your birth plan. The longer you hold it in, the worse it's gonna be. You continue to make stool, even if you're not eating. Stool is a large component of just cellular debris, not just food debris. So what's your plan, Dad? Because I think my plan of going to the aquarium with a body mostly made of poop is brilliant. I think we have to pull out the big dog. Uh -oh. Big dogs? Laxatives. Laxatives. Laxatives could work because they also draw fluid in and get things out. Stool softeners are good if you're maybe taking a pain medication and it's going to cause some um, hardening of your stool. Typically, stool softeners won't work well if you already have stool that's formed. Easy on the bumps. Louise, you wanted to ride in it. I thought you'd pull it better. Well, here we are. Let's see. We'll grab some classic stool softener. Okay. Some fiber powder. So fiber's a bulking agent. Will it make you go to the bathroom if you're already constipated? Plus or minus could make the process worse, especially if you have like a big blockage of poop in your large intestine and then you're bulking it up behind it. Just something to think about. Here's another stool softener. This one has a picture of an old man on it. Must be good. I, I think that should do it. Oh, I hope this works. Typically, if you're buying a bunch of stool softeners or meds to help you go to the bathroom, the pharmacist will actually guide you because a lot of times they don't want you to blow your ass out. Your heart rate is six. I might have missed a couple. Oh my gosh. So that's good. They're using your watch. You're using the second hand. You can count any denomination of 60 seconds and just multiply to get the 60. Sometimes it can differ male to female. Women typically have a little bit lower blood pressure versus the opposite of men. So it's kind of balancing. Moving on to the hearing test. Raise your hand when you hear the tone. Uh... I smell it, but I don't hear it. <laughs> there are different tests that audiologists do where they have headphones and there's like little pitches of different spectrum of noise. Kids get tested when they're born to make sure that they have good hearing. And then you can get tested as you get a little bit older. You know, what are you doing? Practicing. I'm earning my Thunder Girls nursing patch by helping out the new school nurse today. If anyone should be getting a nursing patch, it's me. I nursed forever. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Two different nursing. A nurse that's doing a job, nursing or feeding to get breast milk. I'm only allowed to dispense ice and band-aids, but I think I'll get a lot out of it. <laughs> it's butt fever. Worst case I've ever seen. His butt won't make it through the night. Not on my watch. Starting compressions. Doctor, I need 50 cc's of ice. <laughs> live, damn it, live. Butt fever, obviously not a thing. And then compressions are not done on the butt. They're done on the sternum. When will we use ice in the hospital? If somebody has an ache pain and they want an ice pack, no problem. Or if you've lost a digit or a finger or something like that, we'll put it in a water bath around ice. I guess who's got two thumbs and the flu? The scowl. Feel my forehead. Just feel it. Feel it. Oh yeah, you're on fire. Oh no, Louise, you caught that flu bug that's going around? It's interesting, people refer to the flu as just a generic fever, cough, viral type illness, but the flu is influenza. Probably if you're sick, you got a virus, do your due diligence and stay home. Louise, you do not want that flu bug. I had it and it gave me weird fever dreams. I dreamt I was in a book club with my cousin Vanessa, but she was a werewolf. Classic. People will describe when they're sick, having bad dreams or vivid dreams. If you're feeling bad, let it run its course, hydrate, eat food. They've shown that chicken noodle soup actually has extreme benefits. They've done research on it. How's my sick little pickle? Wow, that's quite a setup you got going on. Now let's get you some medicine, huh? Right down the hatch. Mm. 
a lot of times people will come in asking for different medications that is basically symptomatic relief. Antibiotics, it's gonna cause more harm. It's gonna mess with your gut biome. At the end of the day, rest, fluids, and good healthy food will get you over things fast. Okay, I'll check on you in a little bit. <sighs> like I wanna get better. <laughs> Oh, kids. Those type of liquid medications are most likely over the counter. Cough syrup, it only reduces your symptoms by six hours. You're gonna get better without that medication. Man, that poison ivy is thick. Poison ivy, poison sumac, all these different names. The plant that people can get allergic to. It can cause a gnarly, itchy rash wherever it touches you. Some people don't have a reaction to it, and other people have really bad ones. One person gets it by carrying the rest of us across. So tired, legs itch so much. Look at him, sacrificing himself so that we might live. Why wouldn't you just like use somebody else's t-shirt or something, rip it and wrap the rest of your legs? There are treatments out there to help reduce it. It's not necessarily gonna go away immediately. It's gonna take at least a couple days for that stuff to go away. I'm just not sure this is the best way to teach kids about mono. I mean, most of the time kissing is fine. Maybe that could be the song. Mononucleosis. Isn't that the kissing disease? We call it the kissing disease because it's like kind of spread viral. It's a virus. You actually can get splenomegaly, which is inflammation of your spleen. That's why when you get mononucleosis, they don't want you to play sports because you increase the risk of getting a splenic rupture. Oh no! I'm afraid this student, Mona, is dying. Dying from mononucleosis. Nurse, I need you to write something down. Typically, people are not dying very often of mononucleosis. Yes, there's always the chance for viruses causing long-term issues, but it usually passes on its own without any long-term issues. Yes, doctor? Kissing is really dangerous. What? Is this a way that the school tried to tell kids like not to make out and not kiss? Like, you know, I remember when I got scared tactics by my parents that like if I drank soda, it would stunt my growth. I don't know if anybody has any things that your parents had told you when you were younger to get you to not do something. Wait, doctor. Um, uh, yes, Mona? I feel better. Oh. Hey. Because mono would really only cause death in someone very old, very young, or someone who had a compromised Boom. immune system. <laughs> Kissing isn't dangerous. The misinformation is. Oh! Wait, Daryl, do you have mono? Uh, no. Whoa! There. See, nobody died. <laughs> misinformation happens on you know every stage of our lives. You just have to do your own research and figure out you know for yourself. But the mouth is a pretty gross place. A lot of bacteria, a lot of different things going on there. So it is a pretty dirty place, and we're just sharing it with each other. So just be aware of that as well. I love Bob Burgers. I haven't done one in so long. This was a lot of fun, really entertaining. You know, if you guys like this episode, definitely check out the other two episodes right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn those bell notifications on, and hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching, and stay healthy, my friends.